Greetings from Philadelphia. I'd like to thank the committee for inviting me to participate in this uh, outstanding symposium. I'm going to speak on how histopathology guides the management of retinoblastoma in 2022. I have no financial relationships relevant to this presentation. Let's review a little bit of uh, histopathology. Yeah. Retinoblastoma, of course, is a small blue cell tumor composed of poorly differentiated neuroblastic cells. They have scant cytoplasm, there's lots of apoptosis, and numerous mitotic figures. The tumor tends to uh, uh, undergo necrosis uh, when it extends approximately 90 to 110 microns away from a nutrient vessel. Uh, this gives rise to the appearance of cuffs and sleeves of viable tumor cells uh, surrounded by uh, eosinophilic necrotic tumor. The viable tumor appears blue in H and E stained sections. The necrotic tumor cells lose their DNA and become eosinophilic, and dystrophy calcification occurs in the areas of necrotic tumor. Retinoblastoma shows varying degrees of retinal differentiation. These are evident as two types of rosettes and photoreceptor differentiation or fluoret formation. Homer right rosettes represent neuroblastic differentiation. They lack a lumen and have a central tangle of neurofilaments. They were named after James Homer Wright. Flexter Wintersteiner rosettes represent early retinal differentiation. They have a central lumen that corresponds to the subretinal space, and they were named after two people, Simon Flexter and Hugo Wintersteiner. Uh, photoreceptor differentiation occurs in a, a benign variant of retinoblastoma called a retinocytoma. The uh, florets uh, are composed of bundles of neoplastic uh, photoreceptors, typically uh, inner segments, aligned along a segment of external limiting membrane. And a tumor composed entirely of photoreceptor differentiation is termed a retinocytoma. Of course, histopathology is vital for the accurate diagnosis of retinoblastoma especially in cases with unusual clinical presentations. This 11-year-old girl initially was seen in Hawaii. She initially was thought to have granulomatous uveitis and underwent fine needle aspiration biopsy. Uh, this showed a small blue cell tumor. The eye was enucleated, and she was found to have massive anterior segment involvement, including uh, invasion of the ciliary body stroma, tumor in the anterior chamber, and tumor infiltrating the iris and uh, trabecular meshwork. The FNAB tract in the cornea contains a significant number of viable retinoblastoma cells. Uh, in the past, fine new aspiration biopsy of uh, eyes with retinoblastoma was somewhat uh, discouraged due to the danger of extraocular extension. However, Dr. Munier's work with uh, intravitreal chemotherapy uh, suggests that FNAB uh, for retinoblastoma probably can be performed safely if it is performed carefully. Here's another patient, a 22-year-old woman who was found to have a uh, uh, strange-looking uh, eye. Uh, she had a pink uh, mass uh, invading the anterior chamber, displaced in the iris centrally. She initially was thought to have a melanoma on the basis of ultrasonography. Finding no aspiration biopsy was performed, however, and uh, uh, she was found to have a blue cell tumor uh, consistent with retinoblastoma. She initially was treated quite successfully with chemotherapy, but then was lost to follow-up and returned months later with a blind, painful eye. This was enucleated, and she was found to have an extensive retinoblastoma with massive uveal invasion. Here's the uh, corresponding histopathology of her case. Histopathology, of course, discloses risk factors for metastasis. Classic uh, conventional risk factors for METs and retinoblastoma include extraocular extension or orbital invasion, massive uh, posterior uveal invasion, optic nerve invasion, uh, retrolaminar or to the surgical margin, and uh, anterior segment involvement. Uh, here's a relatively recent case that was seen during the COVID uh, epidemic. This is probably why the tumor was so advanced on presentation. This patient has massive choroidal invasion, seen under higher magnification, and uh, extraocular extension. Histopathology also identifies high-risk features that are indications for adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, the uh, Children's Oncology Group, uh, ARET0332 study, was a prospective study. More than 320 patients with a unilateral retinoblastoma 
Uh, patients were treated uh, with uh, chemotherapy uh, if high-risk features were, di were discovered. Uh, the major indications for high-risk features included the retrolaminar optic nerve invasion and massive posterior uveal invasion. Here's an example of retrolaminar invasion, a major risk factor and an indication for chemo at most centers. Again, if the eye is behind the lamina cabrosa, it's essentially outside of the eye. Retrolaminar equals extraocular. Uh, here's another, uh, here's a case of massive uveal uh, invasion, uh, uh, an obviously massive case of uveal invasion. Well, what's the definition of massive? Well, the International Retinoblastoma Staging Working Group uh, had a consensus uh, definition, uh, came up with that, and they defined it massive as greater than three millimeters in maximal diameter or full thickness choroidal invasion. And here's an example of massive, greater than three millimeter diameter choroidal invasion. The COG study found that 16% of the uh, 320 patients had retrolaminar optic nerve invasion and 12.5% had uh, massive uveal invasion. They also discovered that the patients who had the poorest prognosis uh, uh, had concomitant massive peripapillary choroidal invasion, you know, greater than three millimeters, and 1.5 millimeters or greater of, of retrolaminar optic nerve invasion. Again, three of these patients had this. They all died despite uh, adjuvant chemotherapy, and uh, such patients may require more intense chemotherapy. The COG study also found that contributing pathologists uh, at institutions, which were often university-affiliated children's hospital, improperly processed or misinterpreted histopathology in about 20% of cases. High-risk features were not identified in some eyes and uh, uh, were misinterpreted as being present in other eyes. Uh, here are uh, several eyes that were submitted to the study. Uh, uh, these were supposed, these are PO segments that do not include the optic nerve head, which of course is uh, what we want to really look at uh, carefully. Uh, other pathologists misinterpreted uh, sub-RPE uh, tumor uh, uh, as choroidal invasion. It's not choroidal invasion. It's not behind Brooks membrane. And others uh, misinterpreted artifact tissue contamination of the choroid as choroidal invasion. Uh, this case from Wills actually changed the COG protocol and uh, the standard protocol for dissection of eyes with retinoblastoma as well. In the initial COG protocol, only the PO slide was submitted, and this is a slide from, uh, from our case that had no high-risk features. Uh, hence, the uh, patient did not receive chemotherapy. Unfortunately, the patient developed distant metastases several months later. We retrieved the wet, retrieved the wet tissue and submitted the clots and found a massive area greater than three millimeters of choroidal invasion. Uh, this had not been seen on macroscopic examination. So the protocol of the CIG, COG study was changed, and uh, generally the protocol for dissection and submission of eyes with retinoblastoma generally requires submission of both bread loaf collots in addition to the PO segment and a transverse section of optic nerve. Uh, this car cartoon from Hans Grossnickles Gross uh, shows that the entire eye should be submitted. You also need skilled and knowledgeable histotechnologists and who knows how to cut eyes and can um, prepare high quality sections that include the things that we want to look at. Another prognostic factor that's been recently reported uh, is anaplasia. Uh, uh, this was a paper on the topic by uh, Pia Mendoza and Hans Gross-Nicholas. Uh, Here's an example of an anaplastic uh, retinoblastoma. Under higher magnification, we see that these are poorly differentiated uh, areas of the tumor that have large pleomorphic nuclei with uh, angular, rhomboidal, or fusiform uh, nuclei, uh, with nuclear cellular wrapping, and numerous mitotic figures. Uh, this is in the literature. Uh, it did, uh, anaplasia did not uh, reach statistical significance as a uh, uh, predictor uh, for uh, uh, metastasis or death. This pathology can also provide clue, clues to tumor genetics in certain cases, uh, particularly uh, uh, RB1++ retinoblastoma. 
It's generally accepted that loss or disruption of both alleles of the RB1 gene is responsible for initiating uh, most cases of retinoblastoma. They are, retinoblastomas are RB1 minus minus. However, uh, mutations can't be a fa fa cannot be found in approximately 2% of patients uh, with unilateral tumors and a negative family history. And these cases are called RB1 plus plus retinoblastomas. And the study by Rushlow and co-workers uh, found no RB1 mutations in 2.7 percent of more than 100, uh, more than a thousand unilateral retinoblastomas. Uh, RB1 plus plus retinoblastomas uh, tend to be poorly differentiated. They behave aggressively. They're diagnosed at a fairly young age. They're always unilateral. They're always sporadic, and siblings are not at risk. They also have very unusual cytology. They're composed of undifferentiated cells that have large, prominent, round, or oval nuclei with multiple nucleoli. Uh, there tends to be lots of apoptosis, little calcification, and no flexner Wintersteiner rosettes, which uh, is interesting because uh, tumors from young children usually have lots of rosettes. This shows the uh, cytology, the uh, round or oval nuclei with a prominent nucleoli in the case that we saw a few years ago. Again, we can compare an RB11, uh, RB1 negative and negative tumor on the left with an RB++ on the right. Uh, interestingly, uh, RB1++ tumors uh, seem to be driven by amplification of the MYCN oncogene. And they also, uh, the tumor cell nuclei in RB1++ tumors uh, have RB1 proteins, so they stain with immune histochemical stains. Uh, seen on the right uh, compared to a RB negative negative tumor which has, shows no nuclear staining. Here's another case, a 26 year old uh, uh, girl that uh, had recurrent tumor uh, after, a, uh, after IAC. Uh, when we examined this histopathologically, I was struck by the presence of these uh, round nuclei with the nucleoli. I thought that this was suspicious for RB1++. Looked at the uh, patient's chart and found that no uh, retinoblastoma gene mutation was uh, detected in a blood test. Uh, we performed immune histochemistry for RB1 protein uh, on her uh, tumor and the cells did express RB1, suggesting uh, that we were correct. Uh, the third time, we actually have less histopathology to review. This uh, is due to the uh, prominence of eye sparing uh, therapy, particularly in our uh, area. Uh, we actually reviewed 35 eyes enucleated from patients with retinoblastoma accessioned by our lab between uh, July 2018, 2018 and December 1st, 2021. 25 or 71.4 percent of these eyes had been treated previously. They, and 14 of the previously treated eyes contained no viable intraocular tumor. Previously treated eyes may have had high-risk features prior to therapy that are no longer detectable. Intraarterial chemotherapy, of course, uh, does not uh, probably does not treat uh, most cells that uh, spread outside the eye to form a metastatic disease. I have to remember, uh, high-risk features are not that uncommon. Uh, we did a retrospective study of uh, 297 eyes in the past, and we found that. 18.5 percent of nucleated retinoblastomas, previously untreated retinoblastomas, did have high-risk features. So thank you for your attention.